the Bice believers and friends of the Bice, so good to connect with you again. I trust that you are ready to get blessed this morning or this afternoon or evening, depending on when, you, when you're listening to this recording. We're still doing our series on creative faith, and uh, we're going to apply our faith now, this faith that can create God realities. We're going to start to apply our faith to a life that is spiritual, living as spiritual people, to, to be people that are spiritual, people that are led by the Spirit. And so for that, I want you to open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to spend a bit of time in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 for the next couple of weeks, just looking at what it looks like to be a spiritual person, or what does it be to be someone that lives with God as the source, someone that's led by the Spirit. Romans 8 says that the, the earth is longing for the sons of God to manifest. They're longing for the spiritual sons and daughters, those that are led by the Spirit, walking with the Spirit. To start to, to manifest. And so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to take a bit of time to take your faith, your creator faith, and apply it to how you grow spiritually. How do you become a spiritual person? Or how do you grow in the, in the things of the Spirit? So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, let's read together. It says, Now about spiritual gifts, brothers. I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Let's pray together. Father, I ask you for the presence of your Spirit to be so tangible in our lives right now. We ask that as we open the Word that, that what you'll bring to us, Holy Spirit, will be a revelation. That this will not just be information that we hear, but how we become spiritual people and how do we live by the Spirit. But that you will transform our lives with this truth. I pray that you'll help me to, to serve your people well with clarity so that we can truly see the army of God stand up and wake up to the fullness we have in Christ. We bless you and we honor you. Amen. So 1 Corinthians is a fascinating book because there's so much happening in this book. This was a cosmopolitan in Paul's day. There were so many cultures coming in, so many diversities of, of people and backgrounds. And so some of them met Jesus, heard about this incredible message of Christ, and they gave their life to Jesus, but they still had a lot of baggage, a lot of stuff that they would bring into what they thought was spirituality. And so Paul is writing this letter to, to correct their, some of the abuses that they've had, sexual abuses, relational abuses, and he's, he's dealing with all these things. And what Paul is dealing with in 1 Corinthians or in the Corinthian church at this time is, is, is resistance from within the church. There's some of these believers, these newly formed believers, newly born believers, they started looking at Paul and started thinking to themselves, well, actually, we more spiritual than Paul. So what does Paul know? And so Paul is writing to help them understand what, what true spirit-led lives look like. How does God create a spirit people for himself? And so he's dealing with all these misnomers right through the book. These, these resistance groups inside of the church or this group with resistance they thought they were spiritually superior because they could speak in tongues. They thought it was the tongues of angels. And, and still today, there's that understanding that if you can speak in tongues, you're a little step above your spirituality than those around you. And Paul is writing to, to deal with that, with that issue. The, 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 the spiritual elite in Corinth thought that to be spiritual mean that you were to be successful. And so as they were looking at Paul's life and how he was sacrificing and how he was suffering for the gospel, they're thinking, how can that be spiritual? Surely, if you're spiritual, everything just needs to go well all the time. You can see how it's still relevant for us today. People think unless you have the nice cars and the blessed life, then everything materialistic is a sign of God's blessing. Well, sometimes the blessing of the Lord doesn't sit in all the material things. And so... These people, the, this bunch of resistance people, this group of resistance inside of Corinth, they're living in a place where they've started to give into their flesh, the selfishness of me first and I want to get it. started showing up in their communion feasts where they would just start to eat and have no regard for the other brothers and sisters maybe of a poorer background that didn't have the benefit of, 
of all the food. And so their, their fleshly pride, their fleshly comfort, they felt was a sign of their superiority instead of learning to live a crucified life like Paul. And then lastly, they, they, they had a very misconstrued value of the body. It's interesting when you read the book. On the one hand, they had this over-exaggeration and that they wanted to just use the body for all the sexual pleasures and the pleasures of the world. And the other side of it, they had this undervalued understanding for the body. It's just something that needs to get constantly get trashed and, 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 and mishandled. And Paul is writing to correct them and say, actually, you, know, you must know that your body is a temple of the Lord. Your body is made to carry God's presence. And so he starts off in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and, and he starts to unlock in the first six verses the pattern for someone's life that is spiritual, the pattern for someone's life that has God as the source, or the pattern for someone's life that is led by the Spirit. I like this idea of a pattern because it means that the, the majority of your life is set on a pattern where you're being led by the Lord. Every now and then you might miss it, but that's why a pattern is so helpful. It's sad when the pattern of your life is that every now and then you hear the Lord, but the pattern of your life is that you're living for the world. That pattern Paul is wanting to correct. He's saying, I want the pattern of your life to be a life where you are connected with God. You know that God is your source. You know how the Spirit is leading you. And if you get that one or two moments where it seems like you're missing out, be encouraged because you've established a pattern of a lifestyle that's being led by the Spirit. And so he starts off in, in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 1. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant. There's such a huge amount of ignorance when it comes to being a spiritual person. What's interesting in verse 1 is that my translation and most our translations speaks about the word spiritual gifts. But if you get into the original languages, you find this word pneumatikos, which simply has got, not simply, but it's got three different meanings. It means this. It's concerning someone who is spiritual. It's concerning someone who is led by the Spirit. Or it's concerning someone that has God as your source. And so Paul is not just dealing with the gifts here in, in chapter 12. He's dealing with the life of someone that's led by the Spirit. I find it fascinating asking this question. What does it mean to be led by the Spirit? If Romans 8 says we need to be mature sons and daughters, those mature ones are those, the ones that are being led by the Spirit what does it actually mean? And so Paul in the first six verses is putting this aside. He's helping us understand what the pattern of your life looks like if you are being led by the Spirit. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to think that you are so superiorly spiritual or so poor, so poor in your spirituality. I want you to understand what it looks like to be led by the Spirit, to have God as your source. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to be aware. And so Paul says to be spiritual is to become aware of God, is to become aware of the presence of God. God is not just a conceptual reality. God is a present, tangible reality. And so for us to be led by the Spirit, we need to understand that for us to be spiritual means for us to become aware of the presence of God, to, to carry the presence of God on our bodies. Your body was made as a temple for the Spirit of God to live in. And when you get born again, the Spirit of God moves into this temple. And now to, to be able to carry God becomes the most simple thing. And so how do you know that you're being led by the Spirit? Very simply, are you aware of His presence? Do you take time in your day just to, to close your eyes and say, Oh, Holy Spirit, I just want to become aware of your presence again. Oh, there, thank you. There's the presence. Thank you so much. I want to encourage you, start to fellowship with the presence of God, with the awareness of God's presence. Sometimes just close your Bible. Ask your Heavenly Father to make you aware of His presence, His Holy Spirit presence. And as you start to become aware of His presence, start to lean in, start to recognize His presence. Become aware of Him. Become aware of the presence of God over your head, over your body, over your body parts, as He's touching you, as you sense the peace of God. Because to be led by the Spirit, to have God as your source, you take your faith and you create that pattern of reality, becoming aware of the presence of the Lord. That's what it looks like, very simply, to start to to walk with God. So the pattern for spirituality is to become God aware. The pattern for spirituality is to carry God by faith. 
to converse with God by faith. Then in verse 2, Paul says that when you were pagans, before you met Jesus, you got influenced and you got led astray. So the Corinthian believers had quite a background. I mean, they had a lot of knowledge of what it feels like to be led by spiritual influences. The challenge was with the source they used, that source couldn't speak back to them. They started worshipping mute idols. And that truth is still relevant for us today. How many of us think that we need to apply ourselves for, for cars and for homes and for bank accounts that can't speak back to us? We, we labor and we give ourselves, but we get ourselves in a place where the things we gather cannot provide relationship. Even your car's Bluetooth might be able to speak back to you, but it's because it's programmed. It doesn't have an original thought. And so what Paul is saying around how this pattern for spirituality grows is by realizing that you and I were made compatible for the spiritual realm. Before we met Jesus, we got influenced. Before we met Jesus, we got led astray. We have got all the right connections inside of us already to interact with the spiritual realm. And so Paul is saying for someone that is spiritual, for someone that is led by the Holy Spirit, for someone that has God as the source, you recognize, I don't have to strive, I don't have to, I don't have to fight, I'm already compatible with the spiritual world. My source was wrong. But now that I found Jesus, He's plugged me into the source of life. And the life of God is starting to flow. And, and I'm starting to realize, oh, this is what it feels like to, to get influenced by the Spirit of God. And so Paul says, get plugged in. Get plugged into God. Because here's what happens when you start to plug into the source that is God. What starts to happen is that you start to, to unlock the influence of the Spirit of God in your heart. Matthew 5 speaks about the blessedness of being meek, being easily influenced by the Spirit. He says there's a promise, you will inherit the earth. It's an amazing thing to, to, to plug into God as our source and to say, oh Lord, would you start to influence me? My heart, I want to be meek. I want to be gentle. I want to be easily influenced by your Spirit. And when you start to, to plug into God and you, and you submit your heart to Him, trust that what He's speaking, the, the thoughts He's bringing to your heart, the people that's coming to your heart, the, the stuff that starts to flow in your heart, that that meekness as you respond to the Spirit of God will lead you into great victories, into great stories, adventures in God, that you will inherit the earth ultimately. And so Paul says for for someone that is spiritual, there's a, there's a pattern of godly influence that starts to happen in your life. And maybe for some of you, it's slow. Maybe you're still battling with your addiction of pornography or your addiction of, of nicotine or alcohol. Maybe that influence is slow. But as you start to open your heart, the pattern of your life is that you're going to get influenced more by the Holy Spirit than by the other influences that the world is trying to give you. So the pattern for spirituality is simply this is to learn to respond to those promptings of God. I can't tell you how many times it was just a thought, it was just a prompting, but as I responded on it, and as I, I took steps to speak it or to act on it, the most amazing results happened at the back of this. And Paul is saying, be of good cheer, church, be excited, because by faith, the influences of the Spirit of God will prompt you, and you can know what it looks like and feels like to be influenced by God, to respond to God by faith. And I wish it was that easy that we never needed faith when we responded to God. I wish it just came naturally. But there's always this element of faith that creates our obedience. There's always this moment of, of responding to a prompting. I'm not exactly sure that it was God. I, I think it was. I, I'm not sure. But as you step out, you discover very quickly. And Hebrews encourages us. It says, keep on training. Keep on training yourself. Keep on using this influence by faith. Learn. Make the mistakes. Out of that you will learn. Get the things right. Celebrate that. But learn to respond because to create a pattern of, 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 of spirituality happens when we become comfortable with the God influence. What's interesting in verse 3 and 4 is that, that Paul takes two source markers and he's wanting to now hone in onto, onto what true spirituality is about. And he's, he's saying, listen, church, listen, all you superior spiritual people in Corinth. Let me help you identify the source. And I find that in my conservative Afrikaans background, for me and I let that was a massive concern. How can we be sure when we go into spiritual matters 
that we're not tapping into darkness, that we're not tapping into demonic, how can I be sure that what I'm giving myself for by faith actually is God? And so what Paul does in verse 3 and 4 is he gives you two source markers. He says you need to look out for this one, and if you look out for that one, if you have those two markers, those two markers will give away the source. And the first one that we look at now is, is in verse 3 where he says, No one can say, or no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. He's giving you the marker, the one marker you need that can safely get you to respond by faith. And the first marker that is so vital is the truth marker. The Holy Spirit and that which is led by the Spirit will always make much of Jesus. Whenever you get into, into teachings or circumstance and this thing is not clear, Paul says, watch out. Because the truth marker is there to identify the source. Jesus is the source the activity of the Holy Spirit that makes much of Jesus makes your spiritual journey safe. That you don't have to worry about what influences there might be. And so, so Paul says this. He says spirituality that makes much of Jesus is safe. Spirituality that speaks about the humanity of Jesus. That, that Jesus became a man and that Jesus died. He became a curse to lift the curse off of you, and in that, Jesus is our greatest blessing. To know that Jesus is the ultimate master. He's not only a man, he's the Lord. He's the master of the spiritual world. If there's any demonic presence or spiritual influence that's impure, if you recognize the lordship of Jesus, the master, he says, Paul says, then you'll be safe. You don't have to worry about the, the influence of the source on you. And so to create a life led by the Spirit, influenced by the Spirit, requires faith. And there's a pattern for discernment that Paul says. You need to learn to grow in this pattern of godly discernment. You need to, to, to be truly spiritual is to start to discern the source behind ministry. The source behind spiritual moments. The source behind people's motives. Is it about making much of people or are we making much of Jesus? And Paul says you're in safe hands if you're in a place in your life where you're asking God for the more so that you can make much about Jesus. You're in a safe place in a small group if that small group is not about a leader but about Jesus and making much of Him. You're in a safe place in a church if you're in a church community that wants to make much of Jesus, not just about the leader. And so the pattern for spirituality is to learn to grow in our discernment of spiritual things. We're going to look at that a bit more. There's a second marker that Paul puts out for us in verse 4. And it's a marker, the source marker, to make sure that you're safe in your spiritual journey. And I love how Paul picks up on the diversity of God, the Creator. I love how Paul picks up on the, the creativeness of our Creator. And he lists all these different gifts he says, listen, you need to know that when you, when you want to really be spiritual, when you want to be led by the Spirit, you need to know that God ultimately is your source. And you've got the whole Trinitarian Godhead, all three of them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they backing your spirituality. They want to make sure that you get this, that you, that you know what it feels like to be led, to, to cause impact for Jesus, to become a history maker in South Africa. And he says, you need to know that God is so committed that God the Spirit gave gifts to show you the resurrection power of Christ. Jesus, the Word as God, He Himself is so committed. He gave certain men and women to support your spiritual growth, to become a spiritual people. And he says, God the Father, ultimately, He's so committed, He's so generous towards us that He's even assigned opportunities for you. That you can go and, and make massive spiritual impact by the way that you've been wired through your personality and through the drive of serving or, or leadership. Paul is saying for you to, to know to, how to identify the source of true spirituality, there's this creativity marker. Who are you dealing with? You see, the enemy is not creative. At best, he can deceive. And that's his spiritual power. But he's not creative. You will use the same pattern in your life, the same thing in your life. He'll just use it over and over and over. He's got one method and he keeps working the method. But God is not a boring source like that. 
God is the creator himself. And he's so creative and he's so generous. The whole Godhead has invested into your spirituality. And they're giving you different gifts and empowering you with different people to help and opportunities to grow. And here's what you can know. That when you're dealing with God, there's a creativeness, a creativity that starts to, that starts to show in the life of God. Just God expressing himself through different individuals in different ways. And Paul is saying, spirituality that celebrates the creativeness of God's creation, that is safe. Might look a little bit different to what you're used to, but God is so creative. And even when sometimes there's, there's, there's the presence of the Lord that, that's uncomfortable to you in ways that your reference system might not have exposed you to, you can take great comfort in the source marker. Is it creative? Is it different to what you're used to and does it make much of Jesus? And within those two, you can start to learn how to be led with the Spirit, accessing God as your source. And why is this important? Why is it important that Paul speaks about this creativity and this diversity of God, of how God has got so many facets to Him as being our source? It is so important because when we get into verse 7, when it starts to deal with the the manifestation gifts of the resurrection power of Christ, you and I need to get comfortable with the diversity of how God has made you and me. You see, God expects us. True, true spirituality is simply a spiritual person or individual that's happy to stand up and happy to stand out. Say, so Lord, use me. And so, so much of the, the manifestation gifts that we're going to deal with in our next session we're going we're gonna to see those things get limited through your life when you, when you say, no, no, I, 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 I'm not like that. I'm not, not like him. I'm not like her. I can't do this. God can't use me. So let me rather just, just be quiet. True spirituality, to be led by the Spirit, gets you as a, as, a, as, a, as a man or a woman of God to stand up and to stand out. To say, Lord, I want to show people that you're real in this moment. What are the manifestations of your spirit that, I, that you want to release through me that others can see? And so I want to encourage you. What Paul is saying, for faith that creates spirituality, it creates a pattern for godly diversity. You're going to have to get comfortable in your skin. And I believe there's so much that the body of Christ we need to get freed of just on the, the pressures we put on ourselves of why we think things should be. And I want to ask you, even now, if that is you, if you've got this, this bar of what you think you need to achieve, I want to ask you just to say a very simple prayer and to ask God for forgiveness for you trying to achieve a standard when Jesus achieved it already. I need you to forgive yourself. Say, Lord, I've been abusing myself. The way I look, the way I dress, there's so many things. I'm so afraid to actually stand out. You see, true spiritual people are led by the Spirit and they've got so much confidence and who God has made them to be. And so I trust that as you, as you are listening to Paul and some of the thoughts that Paul is encouraging us with, I trust that there's a hunger inside of you that the pattern of your life will become truly spirit-led. That you will learn how to draw on God as a rich source. The Bible says He's rich in mercy. And I want to encourage you to, to accept these things by faith. To learn to accept these spiritual truths about you by faith and let that create a pattern for spirituality in your life. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the incredible privilege we have to be led by your spirit. And I want to ask Holy Spirit that even now, that you would come and that you would make people aware of your presence. On their bodies, over their minds, just the presence, the rich, rich presence of your Holy Spirit, Jesus. Father, I ask that there will be an activation even now in the humility and the meekness of, of you influencing. I pray even now for the thoughts and the people and the, the projects and, and the things we need to do, that you'll bring those to us even now, that we'll know what it feels like to be influenced, to have the Spirit of God influence our motive, influence our desires, influence our thinking processes. Father, I ask for an activation of discernment. There's many of us that are so afraid to engage the spiritual journey because it might mean that I would, I would leave that which I'm comfortable with behind. Father, I pray that the, that the markers of truth and creativity will liberate your people even now. And that 
especially for those that's, that's listening or watching that says, I don't think it's possible for me, that especially those lies, that you will undo those lies in this moment. Thank you, Father, that we can, that we can ask and just be so grateful that, that as we desire this true spirituality, we can ask you to be led by the Spirit and that we can receive it even now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My friends, keep receiving. Keep receiving. Allow God to, to come and shift your heart, to shift your mind. I'm so looking forward to us being the people of God, led by the Spirit of God. Have an amazing day.